these little thoughts that you've been chasing out here? It's not worth it, man. Is it worth smashing every chick in your church, though? Yeah, we go. I appreciate you coming over here today and checking on me, but I'm good. And we're supposed to be the pastors. I told you to leave these girls alone. everyone to reality check this is a uh, chicks q a um i want to start with ty johnson the creator of chicks tell me what was your thought process when you were creating this this show and, and like, these characters what was your thought process like for this well my thought process basically was um, myself i had gone through a i would call a traumatic experience in a relationship and i noticed at that time in my experience, I had gone through several different emotions that were almost debilitating. In, in, in retrospect, looking at that, during that time, I also noticed other women and men that were experiencing similar traumatic uh, expressions, if you will, whether it be in depression or some type of other withdrawal symptoms from their norms. And it just made me feel better to kind of write it out and to begin to uh, see how these people, their decision processes. So that's kind of how I got these characters. Okay, and then I have to ask because the names are so clever and, and it seems like it's customized for each person. How did you come up with the naming process? How did you do that for each character? Each one of them exuded, I believe, a type of characteristic that would give them a name. Um, for instance, Bree, Bree Carter. Uh, Bree's name is kind of like more of a carefree type individual, someone that is like gone with the wind, if you will, like nothing can hold her down, free spirit, do what I want to do. So it's kind of short. It's also, even though it's female, it's a bit masculine, like Bree, you know, like that's it, finite, you know. Um, the other person, like Crystal LeBlanc. Crystal, I went to school with this girl. She was beautiful. Her name was Crystal um, LeBlanc. I picked because LeBlanc is kind of exotic and it reminds me of my roots which are Louisiana which is Creole you know where the people have the LeBlanc so there's like this mystery to it um, and exotic so that's how I came up with that um, Tatiana I always love the name <laughs> and it sounds like someone that is full of light vibrant so all of my characters kind of had these these names that um, were basically pulled from their personalities Okay. And so I know you guys just completed episode 10. Congratulations on that. Yay, right? And so, and this is for any of you to please jump in. Tell me about the characters and the characters' growth. Like, uh, Alex, tell me about Cleveland and how you've seen this character from episode one to now grow. Like, what, what's this evolution process been like? It's been amazing. Um, transitioning from episode one to where episode 10, 11, it's so uh, it's amazing. Yeah, has he has he has have have we seen things in him from the beginning that weren't there, or new things that we're seeing, or what, what do you think? Okay. So uh, a lot of the things that uh, we're seeing now was there, okay, but just needed time to sort of grow and manifest. Grow okay. manifest into uh, the ending version. Okay. Okay. And then what about you, Bree? Uh, Bree's character, sorry, Bridget. What about Bree's character? What have we, what can we say as far as her growth and evolution? Um, I think Bree has become more forward, um, more like protective of her sister, Tatiana. Like it is, it is a, um, a coming out where she feels like she is like do or die, I'm right or die, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna, I am going to be the spokesperson. Yeah. If she does not want to say anything, okay, but I am going to be that voice for her. Right, okay, and then Rod, what about Devin? He's like the, the Mr. Nice Guy, the, the guy, Mr. Integrity, who does the right thing, who's encouraging. What, what about him? What, do you, what would you say about him? Uh, I'm only here so I don't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> Okay, so, Devin, he's an uh, even kill. Like, he's always mellow laid back. He don't been through some things and he just kind of like want to go from growth. He know what it's like to, to be down 
and they know what it's like um, to go through issues and how it can be a hard times if you don't figure it out in time. Mm -hmm. He knows how he's seen everything, so it's not like this is something that he's not used to seeing. He's seeing all he's, he grew up around all these prophecy issues, mm -hmm. so he recognizes them and he's trying to prevent everyone from going through the things that he did experience himself mm -hmm. or he's seen around him. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of the person that's trying to pull everybody together mm -hmm. when he see them pulling apart. Mm -hmm. And we need that. And then, and what about Nicole? What about Crystal? Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say I've seen her true colors come out. You know, because it seems like she's kind of like started off as this really nice person, and then all of a sudden she's like changing into this diabolical evil person, but. She's, it seems like she's kind of always been that way, but I'm also seeing her past now coming out mm -hmm. and like the things that she struggled with is just really starting to come out to the forefront. Okay, and um, and so with all this this changes in the world <coughs> happening, Ty, what did you, what's the response been like on social media? Like what have people been saying, even with Tatiana's evolution, what have people been saying to you? Do they like it, they don't like it, what are they saying? Yes, I have been tremendously just honored and humbled and how many people I'm seeing that are anticipating the episodes to come out. People are um, people that may have been going through divorce, bad breakups, or even in a relationship where they're finding to be challenging. They're looking at this as kind of like, I won't say roadmap, but something that they're identifying with mm -hmm. that is actually helping them through difficult times. Mm -hmm. If not for themselves, then people that they know or, or situations that they've previously been in mm -hmm. to be able to have those aha moments. Exactly. To look at it and say like, wow, so that's how I looked. Or, oh, that's what that is. So, and that's really what the platform was built for, that identity to be able to know you're not alone. Exactly. And Bridget, have you witnessed that too with, with your character and absolutely, with yourself? Absolutely, absolutely. Like the light that Brie has is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And it's like when when she speaks, it gives other people the permission mm -hmm. to speak as well. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we live in denial mm -hmm. and we don't feel that, you know, that other people know. But when people do know, they just choose not to say anything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. why do you, why has it been revealed to you right. if you don't say anything? Right. So it's like we have to be that mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And the character that Brie has, she is that mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. She is going to go to that. She is going to let other people know. Um, and I think that that has also strengthened me in an area where I've kind of been bashful about some things. But, you know, it, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And I love the part that, that talks about truth and love. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of time, in the, in the, especially in the church, we want to say it's the truth, but we haven't really talked the 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 the, um, the naked truth, mm -hmm. if you will. So yeah. that that's one thing that I enjoy. I see. Right. And Alex, what, have you had positive response from social media to regarding your character? How's that been for you? Yeah, I do. Uh, the feedback is amazing in social media, mm -hmm. and uh, the amazing thing about it is um, today. Uh, loads of people <laughs> will uh, will joke about <laughs> the character that I play on social media, you know, and um, but you know, all you know, they love it, and it's it's a shine light and a lot of things that people go through on a daily basis, but just never ever sat back and thought about it. In a manner where, okay, you know what, I could deal with it this on this aspect, uh, or I'm going through this. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. times we just put it under the rug. So now social media is giving the feedback like, I'm really, really happy. It's a show about you know real life yeah. Yeah. and not yeah. scripted drama mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is filled with you know the negativity. It also shows positive side of it and uh, things that we can uh, all look into a life and uh, make adjustment. So, you know, social media, love it. Especially, you know, my fan base in social media. And uh, I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. you know, there's things that, it just have you in the world. Yeah, that's true. Um, Rod, has playing Devin changed you any, or no? Me and Devin, we kind of got sort of a uh, parallel lifestyle uh, mm -hmm. as far as the character. So it's, not really hard um, playing them. Mm -hmm. I just kind of 
kind of be myself with a dialogue. But Except for the times you won't definitely be a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, yeah, because it's like, that was so close. Cause, like I said, I'm laid back. I'm getting killed. I, I've had part, like, you know, growing up too. So it just, it's all surreal. And, and then it's kind of like mimicking sort of what I truly do or have been through. So Devin is like that, that her, that character. It's just like, he just try to keep it real as possible. Now that I mean, I try to do the same thing. So. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of easy, and then the same thing parallel. Gotcha. And Nicole, are there any regrets about playing Crystal? Do you feel sympathy for her? Do you understand why she's doing what? What's your thoughts on Crystal? Um, I actually really enjoy playing the part of Crystal, which is funny because you know a lot of people be like, "Why would you want to play her?" I've actually had people come up to me like. I don't like you because <laughs> you're the other woman, and you know, you know they've experienced dealing with other women before in their lives. Yeah. So, but for me, it's shedding light to something that's so real. Like there are people out there who literally just don't care about anything but themselves, mm -hmm. and they have no problem ruining a marriage, yeah. relationship, and sure. honestly, people just have to see the craziness in it and like just to watch it on screen and to see someone do it for me I know that it brings awareness to it in a way where people can look at themselves and kind of be like if they are a, the other person to look at yourself and kind of be like you know I see how I'm destroying people's lives you know and it's, it's more than just yourself but it's it's really about people and um, just having a heart for people. So I, I really enjoy playing the role, just coming from the aspect of just trying to bring change and awareness to um, dealing with infidelity. So yeah. Okay, and, and speaking of change and awareness, as you guys move closer to your season finale, what can we expect from Chicks? Like what's gonna happen? I'm, I'm a little nervous to ask, but what's, what's, what, do we, what lies ahead for Chicks? Well, I can tell you this, that it is just beginning. Um, this entire season has been laying the groundwork to really delve deep into these personalities so that people can really see how it all connects. Um, whenever an affair takes place, there's a lot of stuff that leads up to that affair. Whenever there's um, trust that is broken, there's a lot of different things that come into play that cause that trust to be shattered. So we want to dig deep. There's a lot as adults that we deal with in our childhood that create the person that you see today. So in season two, we're going to dive deeper into how did these characters arrive at who they are today and what factors from their past took place. I think in our society today, um, you hear a lot about mental illness, a lot about depression and other um, types of uh, illnesses that aren't necessarily physical. And a lot of that has to do with our experiences, childhood experiences, as well as relationship experiences. And so we're going to dive into that and try and bring some healing, at least some visibility to it, so that uh, we can find our way forward. Sounds amazing. And so season finale airs when? When can we expect season, season finale? Season finale, one full hour length season finale is coming exclusively to the Atlanta premiere. And then thereafter, it will be uploaded to our fan base in December. So please stay tuned. We will be giving you all the details for that. Um, if you can come here to see it live to the red carpet premiere, it's going to be amazing. One full hour. For those of you who've been saying, please make it longer, please. This is your time, one full hour. So that's why we're going to be doing a lot of behind the scenes right now. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, talking about chicks, what were you thinking? We're going to go behind the scenes on the episodes. So you can kind of get into each of these characters and know a little bit more with, and build up your anticipation for what you're going to see in December. Because when I tell you, ah, Rocket's about to take off. If you think episode 10 was something, Baby, baby, like I say, hunty, you have not seen <laughs> anything yet. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Okay, well, thank you guys for this reality check with chicks. We look forward to the season finale and to season two. Thank all you right, all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.